So good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I'm here really representing Mayor Paul Frame, who's shown uh, tremendous leadership for our city uh, on this issue. Uh, city, our city council, our city manager, Marcus Jones. Uh, you may have seen uh, some of our stories. It's been, we've had quite a bit of uh, press and media co uh, coverage, despite not having a Katrina or a Sandy. Um, some of what I'm gonna uh, go over here today has been highlighted in Washington Post or on uh, Jim Lehrer's uh, PBS uh, show or BBC um, over the past couple years. Uh, Mayor Frame is, is regularly um, asked to speak on these and, and so am I. Um, I'm responsible for the planning, infrastructure, and development of the city. Um, so thank you so much for having me here today. I really have to thank uh, Dale uh, for introducing me to Bill. And Bill, um, to throw a little southern speak, so to speak, I feel like I'm at a revival or something. <clears throat> because because <laughs> you're speaking my language. Um, this is what keeps me up at night. This is what my neighbors talk to me about. Um, this is one of the biggest challenges of our time. So uh, let me give you not a technical uh, overview, but just some familiarity so you can understand what we're dealing with, very high level overview uh, of uh, what we're dealing with in Norfolk. It's the most serious challenge in confronting Norfolk. Uh, it's growing in frequency, extent, and the flooding in our city. Uh, this is an aerial view. You see, of course, an aircraft carrier in our sister city across the river. That's in the left-hand uh, side of the image there, the city of Portsmouth. Uh, we all deal with this in what we call the Hampton Roads region of southeastern Virginia, uh, squarely in the middle of the Atlantic coast, uh, eastern uh, coast. To understand the dimensions of this problem, it's probably the helpful to provide some context and hi historical background about our city. Uh, first of all, uh, today Norfolk is a city of 63 square miles. We're 97% developed. We're bounded by the Chesapeake Bay uh, on the north, the Elizabeth River, which you see here, uh, the west and south, and by the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia's largest city. Uh, we're the business, financial, educational, military, cultural uh, center of the region. Uh, we have about 100,000 uh, employees uh, commute in and out of the city every day, uh, 245,000 residents out of a region of about 1.7 million. Uh, we're the home to the world's largest Navy base in the Atlantic Fleet, but not only that, Hampton Roads is the largest contingent of military personnel in the world. Uh, we're headquarters of North American uh, headquarters for NATO, and we have one of the largest uh, and busiest ports on the East Coast. Uh, we're the most multimodal connected city in Virginia, uh, which includes an international airport, a, a new light rail system, uh, and uh, for the first time uh, in an absence of about 20 years, we have again established Amtrak service on a daily basis, uh, one seat service on the Northeastern corridor, actually all the way to here. Uh, connections in Washington and uh, New York. Our topography includes 144 miles of shoreline. It's comprised of beaches on the Chesapeake Bay and then property along tidal uh, rivers and creeks as, as well as shoreline on in-town water supply reservoirs. However, we're also situated on a low-lying physiographic region and nearly all of the city is uh, at below 15 feet of elevation. And so drainage gradients are limited as because we're so flat. And so while water is our most abundant resource, <clears throat> it's also the source of our humble seaport's uh, greatest challenge. Norfolk was founded in 1682 uh, as a colony of the English Parliament, as a port town, uh, 50 acres as you see here on the banks of the Elizabeth River. Uh, the town was nearly an island and it remains so today. And as the city grew in size and population, it was common practice to create buildable land by filling waterways and lowlands. To demonstrate, this map superimposes Norfolk original 50 acres that you saw there on top of our downtown. What is now our AAA baseball stadium, uh, to the right of the interstate there, that, that bridge tunnel, uh, the Waterside Drive and Town Point Park on the south here, and MacArthur Center Mall right in the middle was what you saw previously was, was creeks and inlets. I hope it's an obvious point, but building over filled waterways, as many of us have discussed today, uh, was a perfect formula for conditions that now contribute significantly to our flooding problems. To illustrate, let me offer two quick examples. The benchmark in, in Norfolk for measuring floods is the 1933 Chesapeake Potomac hurricane, which produced a 9.8 foot storm surge in Norfolk. This photo shows flooding along Granby Street, which is a uh, retail and an office district in the core of our downtown. Uh, it was then and remains so today. 
Uh, it's, it, that, this was in the middle, and, uh, just after the worst of the storm had passed. Next photo is from 1962 Ash Wednesday storm, just around the corner from, from that, and again shows uh, flood surge, tidal surge fl flooding in the downtown. In the 18th century, this was the area that was Town Back Creek that you saw uh, where the, the mall was on that earlier slide. Flooding from this, that punishing northeaster uh, was enough to move the city to apply for federal funding to build a seawall. This was a $5 million investment in the early uh, 70s uh, by the Army Corps of Engineers. It has worked just in, as intended, preventing storm surge flooding in the lower part of downtown, uh, but not necessarily flooding from heavy downpours, which still must be addressed. But just in the past decades, uh, in part because of that flood wall, the assessed uh, real estate value of the small core downtown has risen from 200 million to nearly 800 million in just one decade. And it's squarely contributable to that, 500, to that $5 million investment right there. More recently, Hurricanes Isabel in 2003, Irene in 2011, a series of northeasters over a week in 2009, caused near record levels of storm surge and caused significant residential and commercial damage in Norfolk and all throughout the Hampton Roads region. But what has been episodic flooding events in the past have become regular occurrence. These days, every tropical system or northeaster that goes up and down the coast causes pr flooding problems for us. In fact, four of the seven most significant tidal events in the past 80 years have occurred in the past 10. We've also recorded more flooding during heavy rainfall due to the volume of water exceeding the capacity of our stormwater systems. And this flooding is even worse during co coastal storm events. We're now experiencing regular flooding in some parts of the city on streets during lunar high tide sec cycles, something unheard of just several ye years ago. And it's not just an inconvenience, but major roadways become unusable due to the deep standing water on our roads that pre prevent passage. Naturally, we wanted to know whether this was a coincidence or something else was going on. What we found was alarming, and some of the same stories have been said today. But we learned that since 1930, uh, when this tide gauge was established uh, outside the Navy base at Sewell's Point, our relative mean sea level rise has risen 14 and a half inches. That sea level rise in Hampton Roads is the greatest of any on the East Coast, and that rate of sea level was projected to continue increasing, as many of us know. Mid-range predictions uh, for the future rate in Hampton Roads call for two to four inches a decade, which is three feet over the next hundred years. But that's not all we learned. All, along, the rising, along with the rising sea, sea levels, the ground is also sinking, similar to San Francisco and other areas. What we have in Hampton Roads is the geological impact crater uh, with all of the Hampton Roads area sinking around it. This phenomena is being aggravated by groundwater withdrawal, glacial rebound, and reclaimed land. The Chesapeake Bay's Program Scientific and Technological Advisory Committee est estimated the average rate of subsidence in Hampton Roads to be more than a half an inch a year. It is for these reasons that NOAA warned that Norfolk and Hampton Roads rank second only to New Orleans as being at greatest risk from sea level rise for, an area of our met for a metro area of our size. Compounding this, we're one of the top five most vulnerable cities to hurricanes on an annual basis. Future projections of long-term impacts, relative sea level rise call for more frequent and severe flooding, flooding insurance being required for more properties at higher costs, which we're experiencing now, particularly after bigot waters, more disruptions to our transportation network, a reduction in suitable land for development, particularly for a city that's completely built out, loss of wetlands and wildlife habitat, and businesses and residents not, may need to make a strategic retreat back from threatened shorelines in certain areas of our city. We don't look at the causality uh, uh, basis for this, but whatever the, it is, we know that we have to do something. So we have established over the past couple years a strategy uh, for dealing with this, realizing the magnitude of which we divide our work into a four-pronged approach. Plan, prepare, mitigate, and communicate. This is similar to one of the federal agencies with three components, but we realized that communication was key to this. Our plan area is where we organize our city planning, regulatory activities, study and analysis, and modeling and simulation. Prepare is focused on emergency preparedness, education, certification, and training. It's emergent in nature and develops our tools for how we deal with storm events. 
Mitigate includes our infrastructure and development and other techniques for remediation and resiliency. And communicate is where we focus on our outreach, our partnerships, our events, and our online resources. The key to implementing this strategy rests with the cross-departmental committee that meets on a bi-weekly schedule. The fact is that no other issue in the city receives as much attention by a team of executives, managers, and technical staff other than flooding or our coastal inundation. We understand that to be successful, we must get outside of our individual disciplines, whether they're planning, engineering, finance, legal, communications, to work together. As part of our planning efforts, we've engaged in a multi-year effort to evaluate coastal flooding hazards and, and, and identify mitigation efforts. During 2008 and 9, the city began a tide gauge monitoring program to determine the relationships of water levels between tribal tidal tributaries in the city and the NOAA, NOAA gauges. The results were used to define water levels throughout the city for a range of tidal return periods. And from that data, we established a GIS-based model, which gave us the predictability we need for the extents and depths throughout the city. And based on those predictions, we've established policy, education, changes, building codes, eleva elevation of buildings that are targeted, roadways, and new infrastructures, which do include hardscapes and softscapes, green infrastructure. Subsequent studies performed by the Dutch firm Fugro Atlantic helped identify specific mitigation alternatives uh, in the most flood prone areas that we have. In addition to tidal flooding, we also deal with precipitation flooding from more intense rainfall than we've ever experienced. To address this, we did a similar study and broke the city up into different stormwater uh, watersheds. We identified 20, 250 water drainage shed projects and basically uh, the rate of the city uh, funding right now have established a 20-year uh, plan to completely upgrade our stormwater system. Our plan activities are not only focused on, on protecting properties but also with, with engineered solutions but also providing protection on a site-by-site -site basis through our zoning ordinances. Next month, the City Council will consider a new base flood elevation standard of three, three feet for all new uh, construction and for any construction that has more than 50% of assessed value improvement over a five-year period. With these individual regulations, houses will be built to, to anticipate flooding, at least as we estimate, for the next 100 years. Our prepare activities reach out to uh, communities through our citizen emergency response team. We train our citizens on how to deal with storm uh, efforts and we certify them. This is based on the storm ready uh, program through FEMA. And then additional technology has been deployed to provide real time monitoring uh, like we never had before for our stormwater, wastewater, water, and underpasses throughout the city. Just a couple of months ago, we also launched an iOS app that enables citizens to give us crowdsourcing uh, photo reports through their mobile devices as they see flooding uh, occurrences through the city. Some of our mitigation includes some small scale and large scale efforts. We're presently investing seven million annually for, for stormwater projects. We've installed 3,000 watertight manhole covers throughout the city. We've also raised electrical components in our, all of our pump stations. Lastly, our communicate activities uh, we partner with those that are not just in the gov in municipal government disciplines. We have an exec experts advisory committee that meets on a quarterly basis that includes the military, includes the ports, and includes NASA that's in our area. Norfolk undertook these studies with an understanding that we would have a significant uh, infrastructure plan that needed to be developed. But right now it's more than we ever uh, could have imagined. The, est the estimate for this plan is nearly $1 billion. That equal that's equal to our annual operating and capital budgets for one year combined. As one of Virginia's most fiscally stressed cities, that amount is obviously more than we could ever expect our citizens alone to bear, particularly because of the national important strategic assets that we have in our 